Hey guys, sorry I'm not here today. Um, I have to take care of some of my own personal business, but I did want to leave this video here for you so you can take a couple of notes and maybe even learn something while I'm not here. Um, so these are the notes that we're going to take just for today. Uh, hopefully if you're watching this, you figured out how to uh, play the video and everything's going to work out real well for us today. All right, so here are the first notes, the first notes we're going to take. Um, the stuff we're doing today is called rational functions. And what we have, what I want you to really understand is that a rational function, um, it's a function that has one polynomial on top of another polynomial. So it's the ratio of polynomials. And they're all based on transformations of this reciprocal parent function, which is 1 over x. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this when I'm here in class next time, but I just want to give you sort of a breakdown of what's happening um, for today. So things you should understand about rational functions is they're made from transformations of 1 over x, the reciprocal function, and they're called rational because they're a ratio of polynomials, one polynomial on top of another one. Um, these are going to contain vertical, horizontal, or what are called slant asymptotes. Um, today, all we're going to deal with are vertical and horizontal. We're not going to monkey around with the slant asymptotes at all. Next class is when we'll start talking about slant asymptotes. Slant asymptotes require us to do a little bit of long division and synthetic division, so just know that's coming your way. All right, so when we graph rational functions, which is what we'll be doing today, um, they usually result in strange-looking graphs, meaning that we're going to have uh, you know, things that look sort of, if you look at this, uh, look sort of scary, kind of like that. But don't worry, by the end of class, you'll be able to graph these. So, they usually result in strange looking graphs. And you must follow the following steps to ensure you have accurate graphs. And I'm going to make a little addendum to this, to these notes right here. So, number six um, should be find the y intercept. Find the y intercept. And that's just given by f of zero. So you find f of zero, that tells you what your y-intercept is. That's a step that I forgot to list off of here. So go ahead and pause the video, um, write these notes down, and I'm going to explain a couple of things about horizontal asymptotes. So go ahead and pause that now. All right. So as promised, you should have already taken these notes, and now I'm going to show you a little something about horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes. Now, horizontal asymptotes are a little bit different from your other asymptotes because we can, we can cross horizontal asymptotes, or HAs. Sometimes I'll call them HAs. So, we can cross horizontal asymptotes, but horizontal asymptotes tell us the end behavior. In other words, when I say it tells the end behavior, it tells us what's going to happen when we're far away from the origin. So usually, my horizontal asymptote is going to look um, something like this. It's just going to be a horizontal line given by an equation y equals some value. In this case, let's call that value a. So in this case, it's y equals a, and this is my horizontal asymptote. So no matter what's happening, no matter what's happening anywhere near the origin, it doesn't really affect, our horizontal asymptote doesn't really affect things near the origin. It only tells us how things are going to end up. So what we always want to make sure we do is we always want to line up right along our horizontal asymptotes. So as you go further and further away, as your end behavior uh, goes to infinity and negative infinity, you have to line up with that horizontal asymptote. If you don't, you're not going to get an accurate graph. So let's figure out how do we know where our horizontal asymptote is going to be? How can we tell what value that's going to be? Well, it's actually pretty easy. And next class, we're going to talk about something called the limit. Ooh, the limit. Scary, scary, scary. If you know uh, Mean Girls, you may have heard the limit does not exist. And this refers to the exact same thing. So, just so you have a little preview of what's going to happen next class, when we take a limit, we take our function f of x, and we say the limit as x approaches infinity. So the limit as x approaches infinity of our function, that equals some value, which is the equation of our horizontal asymptote. So 
this number right here, when you get that, when you solve that limit out, the number in here, that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. So just like up here we have y equals a, the number you get here, that's your a. That tells you where your horizontal asymptote is. Now that's all good and well, but it's kind of complicated. And since I'm not actually here to show you how to do that, I'm going to give you the shortcut for finding these horizontal asymptotes. And there's really only two cases where you have to be concerned with. Um, the first one is where I have a degree in my numerator that is less than the degree of my denominator. What? What does that mean? Well, let me show you what that means. Let's say, so let's do an example one here. Let's say that example one is going to be this. I have f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 and the denominator to that is 3x squared minus 14x plus 6. Okay, now in this case, the degree of the numerator is 1 and the degree of the denominator is 2. What we can say is that if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator, our HA, our horizontal asymptote, is at y equals 0. Always true. Always, always, always going to be true. If the degree on the bottom is larger than the degree of the top, our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Just like that. So if this was squared and this was cubed, y equals 0. If this was to the fourth and the degree of the bottom was a fifth degree, y equals 0. Anytime the degree on top <coughs> is less than the degree on the bottom, y equals 0. And for those of you who are wondering, well, what is degree? Ask your friends. Somebody in class is bound to know what the degree of the numerator is and what the degree of the denominator is, okay? So feel free to work together on this, on this exercise as you're going through and solving out some of these problems after you watch the next videos. So let's do another example. And the other example we have to deal with is, well, what happens if the degree on the top is the same as the degree on the bottom? So let's say that I have g of x, and it's equal to 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4, divided by 9x cubed plus 6x squared minus 15x plus 12. Well, in this case, we're only going to look at, just like last time, we're only going to look at the things with the highest degree. So the term, the leading term, which is the highest order term. And if we notice, in this case, the degrees are the same. So, if the degrees are the same, then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals coefficient of numerator divided by the coefficient of the denominator. So when, when I say the coefficient of the numerator and the coefficient of the denominator, I mean just the leading term. Just the leading term. So in this case, we have a 3 and a 9. So that means that my horizontal asymptote is at 3 over 9. So y equals 3 over 9. That's where my horizontal asymptote would be. And if you want to reduce that even further, yeah, you can say that that's going to be y equals 1 over 3, and that would be my horizontal asymptote. So let me just do another quick example so you can see how that works. So let's say I have example 3 here, and this one is going to be p of x is equal to 4x squared minus 16x plus 5, and the denominator is just going to be, um, let's call it 8x squared minus 4, just like that. Nothing too complicated. Well, we look at the leading coefficient in the numerator, the leading coefficient in the denominator. I notice that the degrees are the same, so I can cut right to the chase now, and I can say that my horizontal asymptote, HA, 
is at y equals 4 over 8, just the coefficients that we have here and here. And that would be where my horizontal asymptote is. Um, there's another case, right? You're probably all wondering, well, what happens if the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator? Don't worry about that yet. That's going to give you what's called a slant asymptote, and we'll talk about that next time. All right? Um, I hope this helps. If you need to watch this again, please.